in the cloud and I'll, I'll have it in my, um, it'll be in my Zoom if you want me to send it off to someone else. All right, very cool. All right, all right, any any wins, Any anything cool, anything exciting going on this week or this past week? Okay, go ahead, Janelle. Unmute yourself. Tell me what's happening. Tell us what's happening. Trying. There you there go. You go. No, I'm just going to let you know we finally closed on the 17 condominium complex deal that I was working on this last week. We got everything done. All good. I'm super fired up. So you don't just do one at a time, you do 17 at a time. <laughs> why why just sell yeah. one when you can sell 17? Why? Why? Very cool. That's great. Cool. Awesome. awesome. Good job. All right. Anybody else? Anything else cool going on this week? Wow, what a boring group. All right. I got to tell you, tell you something that, uh, you know, speaking with Craig this morning, um, uh, very cool that he's working with uh, two buyers right now. Hasn't got a deal secured yet. I don't know if you heard anything since we spoke. Working with two buyers that were, uh, referred to him from Jennifer Yi, who's not on the call here right now, but she's she's uh, she joins our group a lot of Mondays. So that's kind of cool. And that um, always uh, there's Jennifer coming on right now. I think it's that Jennifer. Anyways, uh, whenever you have any referrals, is anybody here? Anybody else here worked with each other on a referral basis? I think I, I know of a couple right now that I can see. And if you here's the thing, if you're if you're if you're seeing just me right now, if you go up the top right hand corner, if you just click where it says uh, where you'll see the view and change it to uh, gallery view, then you can see everybody on it at once. I did. Anybody a, else have, go ahead, Sue. I did a deal with Janet Janet Moore this year, which was great. I had very happy buyers who can't well, wait to go to Florida <laughs> right now. Um, and I'm looking for an agent in Costa Rica. So if anybody's got any connections in Costa Rica. Ooh. Craig from Ottawa it has a place in Costa Rica. He's got to be able to steer you in the right direction. Yeah, we, we have a place in Costa Rica. So we know a couple different agents down there. Just if you can send me an email, let me know where you're looking. I'll uh, set you up. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Good stuff. Yeah, I always want to uh, you know, try to keep the referrals in the family whenever possible. I mean, and then if you... Uh, you know, if you if you if you know someone, obviously let's talk to them. I know I know uh, Dane's gotten referrals through this group too, and he's just popping on here now. If you if you have if you need a connection, let me know. I'll hook you up uh, within our group if we feel it's going to so, be a good fit. And, Whoop. Um, okay, someone's. Oh, I think that's Natalie. Natalie, I'm just going to mute you. Okay. All right. So. Um, yeah, so if, if there's someone good within our group, let's hook you up. If not, let's go out into a loom or the other group. And if not, there's lots of other referral groups out there. And I'm involved in a, in a few too. And I think that um, I'm pretty sure, James, you and Janelle have worked together on a referral basis too, I think. I believe it was you or yep, I, don't know, I can't remember. We've, yep, done, good, uh, good, we've good. done one. Good. Yeah, so let's, all, let's, let's, let's make sure we keep it all within the family if we can. Let's, keep, let's hoard all the money in our group. That'd be awesome. That's really cool. All right, good stuff. Um, does anybody have any questions before we get? Um, I muted you, Natalie, because you were uh, you were making it was garbling, so I had to mute you. Okay. So, anyways, if anybody has any questions before we get started, let's go before we get started. Nothing. All right. So I would like to introduce to Suzanne Casey. Suzanne, I'll get you to introduce yourself here in a minute. Um, I was, we were going through um, some things over the last couple of months. One of the things that Suzanne, I always have to make sure I say Suzanne versus Sue Ann. You guys, I wish you guys get just get the same name, please. <laughs> and that I uh, want to make sure that, that, that uh, you know, she's working on her presentations and um, she, she spent a lot of time on it. And uh, I got a little preview of her. It's a buyer presentation, which is really, really cool. So she's going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, she's going to guide us through screen share. I assume you can do that, Suzanne, and then uh, tell us how she did it. And uh, before before we start on that, if you if you um, if you go up in the top right hand corner, click on speaker view, then you'll see uh, Suzanne, and then when she screens your shares her screen, then she could do that. So Suzanne, if you could just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you, your background. 
coaching experience, that sort of stuff? This is the part maybe, I hate. Maybe not your coaching experience, because I don't want you to say anything <laughs> bad about me. Okay, so let's carry on with that. Sorry. Go ahead, Suzanne Casey. Um, I am in Columbus, Ohio. I have had a team, not have a team right now. It's just me and my significant other. I'm in Columbus, oh. Ohio. Siri's talking to me. Um, <laughs> that's weird. Um, and then I have a virtual assistant. So, so right now with everything that's going on, um, we've tried to run lean and mean, even though we still had a great year, we, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't have a lot of inventory, so there's not a lot to sell. And I'm really just trying to work with people who have, who want to buy or who want to sell, whoever I'm not distinguishing between whether I'm working with buyers or sellers. And that's kind of what Doug and I have talked about. Um, just trying to be more efficient, especially with our, not a lot of people, like how do I leverage myself? And I've never been one who, we haven't really done buyer presentations and I've been able to educate our buyers whenever I take them out on showings, but there's no houses to look at. And so when you take somebody out, they got to buy it or they've got to forget about it. So there needs to be a lot more prep work and the buyers who are serious are already seeing this stuff happen out on the market. So they know that they have to be prepared. So they're more than happy to, to schedule some time and sit down with you to go over all this stuff. And so I wanted to make the presentation. I did, I, and I don't even call it a presentation. It's just a chat. And I put up the slides to keep myself focused because otherwise I'd go down a rabbit hole and just talk to people and not do what I was supposed to do. So that's how I like to use my presentation. And this time of year, I reevaluate what we've been doing. Um, what can we do better? What can we do different? What new tools are out there? Because I don't want it to be boring for people to work with us. And how can I leverage myself? How can I get stuff into people's hands and provide an education without having to spend a lot of time with them? Because there's just not a lot of time to do that. So that's kind of where I came up with this. Um, how many people use Canva? Do people, okay, a fair amount of people. Um, I am, I'm gonna share my screen. I am constantly surprised at the amount of content out there. Um, and just to give you an idea of what I use, I have the Pro and I believe I pay annually. I'm not sure I should probably check, but it's only $10 a month to be a pro member and you get all sorts of content. One of the things that was really important is I was able to upload my brand kit. So you can see all of our logos, they're already uploaded here. I have fonts. I had a designer several years ago put together a brand kit for me. I have colors, so they're all uploaded. So whatever I work on, if I work on brochures, if I work on a presentation, I can make it all match and match my brand. So that's one thing you can do with the pro um, and considering where we're all at and we see value in spending money on coaching, I would most definitely see value of spending $10 a month on something like this. Um, so one of the things that intrigues me is video. And I started with, and Doug, do you want me to go through like just a regular generic presentation or do you want me to do mine? I can't hear you. Maybe just start with uh, just start with uh, you know what you feel would be you know, to, to segue into what you did. I guess. Okay. So yeah. so what I came across and what excited me was being able to create a presentation, and I just go into the presentation mode, and then I chose real estate, and then you get all these great different real estate presentations that you can use. Um, and you can scroll through here and there should be, you can see the ones that have video included. They have this little play button up in the corner. So those are the ones that have video content. So I picked one, let me find the one, oh, this one here. And I, I've just done this for my buyer presentation, but I'm going to do this for my listing presentation too. And I'll show you another reason why. So I chose this template and there's 26 pages. So that's a little overwhelming. Um, what I normally do is I have a format that I can show you that an information that I wanted to convey. 
and that may or may not fit into these templates, but I find a close one. Um, I can very easily get caught up in trying to choose the best one and will this one be better? And you know, done is better than perfect. So I don't agonize over that. I'm, I'm definitely gonna add stuff and tweak it, but I basically just chose this presentation here. And one of the things that's cool is you can see that there's video. Can everyone see that? Okay. I ran that by Doug when we first talked about it because I was worried it would be like a little bit too graphic heavy for Zoom, but it worked just fine. And I've done it with three buyers so far and they loved it. And I felt like they were prepared. Um, so you're gonna wanna pick the slides that work for you. And I don't know what city this is. So in order to change things, you have this other little option on the side video and you can put in your town. So what I did is I searched for Columbus and I get all sorts of different videos about Columbus. Where are they getting those videos from, do you know? It, when you're, I, I don't know, it's just like when you, um, you can pay. Like Shutterstock sort of stuff. They, they yep, got, yep, and it's yeah. all, for $10 a month, it's totally worth it. So you get all of this. I mean, we, we went through this. There's all kinds of videos and there's also photos. So no matter what you want to do, there's great professional photos to use in your content. Hmm. Um, so I found a video that I wanted to use. This isn't the one, but I'll just put that in there. So now it's Columbus. So now it's more relevant to my market. And it just plays this little, I think this is the river, so that's probably not a good one, but I played around with the ones that I liked and came up with my, I don't know what this one is. Let's see, there we go. That's exciting. So you can just change and change the text to work for you. I, I modified the text because I added, I added my, my brand text and so it automatically puts it into a different font. Um, so what I came up with is this one here. So when you're when you click that when you're presenting it's just playing in the background it's just looping through on mm -hmm. this on each slide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it makes it much more, I think, exciting than showing somebody a PowerPoint, don't you think? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can, there's a couple different options here. And this was the exciting thing that I talked to Doug about, because what I would normally do is just present. And I like to be able to be in control, so I don't want it to play without my interaction. But there's a new feature called present and record. And I have not played with this yet. So full disclosure, I don't even know how to tell you how to use this, but I'm going to do that with my listing presentation and put together all of my marketing and how to prepare your home and how to choose a realtor and do all of that in a similar type presentation and record myself. Because what I'm finding is people don't look at your stuff. They don't read it. They don't want to read. Um, and that's probably the nature of at least my market where we have no listings and sellers just want to hear from the person who's going to give them the highest price. So they don't even look into whether you've sold anything. They don't look into your marketing plan. They don't look into anything. So maybe they'll watch a video <laughs> mm -hmm. where I tell them stuff. I also don't want to spend three hours in someone's house. So I'm going to send, put all my, my listing stuff together, send it ahead of time and then just meet with them with the CMA and give them a personal touch when I'm with them. So I haven't really played with this, but what I normally do and what I did with my call is we had with my clients is I've had just a regular Zoom call. You can do just a standard presentation and then you can go through it with your clients. So I just go through exactly what I do when I work with a buyer and what my role is in the transaction. And then I added these cool little videos. This is all from Canva. So if you wanted to, you could record your own, 
which eventually we'll get to if I had those videos and maybe have me helping a client, Larry helping a client, us doing something together, but you could play that in the background instead of the stock photo. So, so is it, is it, it looked like it was a little choppy there. Is that just, and that might be because of internet. So that's one thing that I'm kind of concerned about. It looks great on my end. So it's going to depend. And that was one thing that I had to check with my clients to make sure that they were going to look at it on a computer because back in the spring, when we were doing a lot of zoom, I had mm -hmm. people hop on, on their phone and that is not going to, that's not going to work. Right. Okay. So to set expectations, does that look better? Yep. It's going a little bit better. Okay. I'm at the office. Who knows? Maybe someone's downloading something. Lori's just asking you, are you able to um, uh, voice over? Yes, I think that's what the, um, the studio thing is about, where you can present it and you can record and you can add um, audio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, Jennifer said it looks great on her end. It might've been just be okay. my internet. I think, uh, I think Benny's downloading some, I don't know, doggy <laughs> porn or something. Slow my He's on Napster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's sleeping right beside me. Okay. So, so I just go through exactly what I'm going to do for people. And, and one of the things is I, I just set the tone for pre-approval why it's important, or if you're paying cash, get all your documentation together. Um, I'm going to set them up a search that's ASAP. Um, I use Boontown and our buyers, because there is so little on the market, they want to be notified as soon as possible. And I I believe that we pull data faster than like Zillow, um, faster than realtor.com. So they're getting stuff from me ASAP. So that it hits them before the other portals get them. And then, then that I negotiate on their advocate through the whole process. So these are just slides. Can you go, really can I just stop for a second? Can you go back to the beginning and just present your presentation, like present to us, like we're, we're a buyer so that we can get the whole feel of the thing, if that would be okay. Then maybe what we can do at the end, we could stop and ask some some questions about particular slides. Well, 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 like I said, like I just set this up with, um, you know, Doug, you're my client. So this is what I will do for you. I'll find you the best home. We'll work together to do that. I'll negotiate the best terms and we'll work together on that because we're going to have to work with the seller and what they need. Um, secure the best financing. I have lending partners who actually win in multiple offers. A lot of my lenders will call on your behalf. They will pitch to the, the seller's agent. They have good reputations. So seller's agents who see a pre-approval from them um, actually carries a lot of weight and they can help you win in a multiple offer situation. Um, least amount of hassle. I'll do the whole thing if you let me. And then I have an assistant that helps me work and keep your paperwork together. And you don't have to pay me any money. That's all baked into the sale. Sellers will pay. So the most important steps are getting a pre-approval. You need to know that I will send you listings that match your criteria as soon as possible. And I will negotiate on your behalf. I am your advocate. And I will never put any pressure on you whatsoever. Um, and just so you know, Doug, we talked about this before. I'm not going to read this all to you. This is really just an indication of what's going on. So I stay focused. Um, feel free to stop me at any time if you have questions or you want to chat. Um, we do a focus search. You don't have to search online to endlessly look for homes on Zillow and find out most of that information's out of date. Um, you don't have to call every single listing or call for sale signs or look for sellers agents online. You just let me know what you want or what you're looking at. No more pressure to pick a house. I will never put pressure on you whatsoever to pick a house. And I'm your trusted advocate. I'm always going to act in your best interest. And then especially in the time of COVID or if you're relocating, if you are a VIP client, I will preview homes and we can do a FaceTime tour or I can record a walkthrough and share it with you. So you don't even have to be here to buy a house. So we talked early on the first step is financing. And it's really, really important to know what your buying power is. 
Um, if you have to pay off some bills or you need to file your taxes, you need to know about that ahead of time. And knowing where you're comfortable and confident that you're gonna get the best terms is gonna let you make a stronger offer when the time comes. And if you're a cash buyer, because you told me you might pay cash, it's time to get all of your documentation together so you have proof of funds from your bank account because we might not be able to do that if we have to move quickly to write an offer to get a house. So this is what a seller looks at. Everything being equal, you've got two buyers, one's ready, one isn't ready, which offer would you pick? It's pretty obvious that you're gonna pick the person who has their finances in order. In order to prepare for that, now some lenders may or may not do this. I know that I've worked with a lot of lenders who will just uh, pull your credit, make sure you have a job and you can get a pre-approval. It's not until later that they ask for your tax returns, but these are things that you should be prepared for. Somebody is going to pull your credit. They are going to go through your taxes and your bank accounts, and they're going to make sure that you have a job. And they're going to do this a couple times throughout the process. And then once all that's done, you're approved. So you're ready to buy a house. And the last thing I want to happen is to have you not do this and then find the house that you want and not be prepared. That's horrible. So I need to make sure that you're prepared. So another one of our lenders is great with rehab loans. And wouldn't you agree right now, it's really hard to find a house. There's not a lot on the market. If we can borrow money to actually do some improvements and some updates, maybe a house needs a new roof or it needs a new kitchen or a bathroom or some flooring, I can actually get you that money. So once we go through the pre-approval process, we talk about what you actually want in a house. So there's gonna be some things that we talk about, what, what you have to have, what might be nice to have. Um, this is maybe where I do a little bit of marriage counseling because you guys might not want the same things. So we're gonna to have to reconcile that. Um, I have a powerful search engine who, that is connected to our MLS and you will actually get the houses that match your criteria. And then I'm only gonna send you the houses that match your criteria. And one of the things to remember too, I'm kind of loose when I set up a search because I don't want you to miss anything. So no house is gonna be 100% perfect. I want you to keep your options open. So once we do all that, you're gonna to wanna to go by and check out a house. So I wanna make sure that it's in the area that you want it to be in. I don't wanna waste your time. So let's make sure we map it. Let's look it on Google Street View. Let's make sure that there's no railroad tracks behind it. Those are all things that we can't change. So let's make sure the location works before we actually get excited about photos. And there's a lot that you can do without even getting in your car. And let's use the tech tools at our disposal to save all of us time. And the things that I do when we get to this step in the process is, is guide you. Um, I will share with you information on what our contract looks like, the things that we need to be prepared for, and we can discuss that so you're ready when the time comes. Um, I will present your offer. I actually call the agent. I talk with them. I've been doing this for 15 years. I know most of the agents who have been around for a while. And I have a good reputation of producing good clients and getting to closings. So that helps you. I'll also work with that seller's agent to negotiate on your behalf. And then we will manage from contract to closing. Like I mentioned earlier, we'll do everything for you if you want. And I will never put pressure on you. Whatsoever. I want this to be fun and easy. So let's say you can't be here, or let's say that your work schedule doesn't allow you to actually go out and look at houses. Because sometimes we are limited, like there, we're not doing overlapping showings because of COVID. So you might not be able to go at a certain time, but I can actually go into a house and make a video for you. 
or we can FaceTime. And I've actually sold five or six houses this year with people not even actually seeing the property. So that's one of the things that we do, that, we, that we've been able to do successfully because of technology. Um, and it's amazing. A lot of people are flexible with that. So we can help you do home searches, home tours, live, recorded, whatever you want. And then for our VIP clients, we'll also tap into off-market inventory. So maybe a property was listed and it didn't sell last year or two years ago, or maybe it's, we just know of a client because maybe we've gone on a listing appointment and somebody is not ready to actually sell their house right now. Those are all things that we do. If you want to be in a certain neighborhood, I will contact the people in the neighborhood and see if we can actually find a house. And we do a handful of sales per year for our clients this way. Um, in fact, I just put one in contract this weekend, which was a property that I found for a buyer. And I think because of the light inventory situation, I don't think that's going to get any better. And we're probably going to do a lot of business this way. And isn't it important to be working with someone who has those resources? And then just a little bit of information about us. Me. Larry, and then just a summary of all the things that we do. What questions do you have? I don't have questions as a, uh, as a buyer. Does anybody have any questions of the presentation? Anything they saw? Unmute yourself and just ask questions. Go ahead, uh, Craig well, from Ottawa. That. My, my only question is we were trying to uh, screenshot as we were going, which Angel did a whole bunch of screenshots, and we know it's on Facebook. But um, Suzanne, if I send you off an email, you can send it on over. Oh yeah, I'll share it. I love it. Is it a link? Is it a link, Suzanne? Yeah, I can do a link. I said I shared a link with you. Did it work, Doug? With me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. But maybe what you can do is just pop it into the pop it in the Facebook group. Oh, just I send, didn't need send to a link. That. Sorry, let me do, let me go back. So do you ever prepare yourself just in case video doesn't work? Um, yes. Okay. Um, I don't totally rely on this. I mean, okay. I've been doing it long enough that I kind of have like set things that I'm going to talk to clients about anyway. So yeah. if I just chit chat with them. We'll talk about lenders. I probably, I'm not as formatted. It's more like casual conversation. On the phone. <clears throat> Cause I'd have to share my login with, so I'm the assistant and I'd have to share my login with all the realtors for them to be able to present it this way. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's the only obstacle that I see using all these video formats. But other than that, like, I guess I could just download it as a video and they could use that too. I'd have to test it out. But Sorry, I love Well, one of the things that's new that might be worth looking into and you can't, these are just all my presentations, but I- So you're presenting right from the Canva website though. Yes, I'm presenting that. from okay. Canva, but one of the things that's new and I have not researched yet, um, you can have, there's a team mm -hmm. version, you can create a team and I, it's the same price. So you can have up to five people on your team now. So oh. depending upon how many people are in your group, you everybody could have a team login and they could access the presentation now i don't know if you could res restrict or just let them have access to certain things you probably mm -hmm. could because i wouldn't want everybody to have access to all of my my half-baked projects right right <laughs> <laughs> but you could probably give them access to like certain presentations cool okay thank you and then the the whole I'm not sure who asked about, um, so one of the things that I haven't played around with, but yes, you can record, you can present and record. So I haven't played around with this yet. I do use Loom um, and Loom is at like a screen capture, but I use that when I do a, a seller update, when I have to review with sellers, like what's happening in the market around their house. 
maybe why their house hasn't sold, what else is selling around them. So I go over four or five different areas of information and I record it on Loon. So I would imagine that this works pretty much the same. Okay. So Suzanne, um, you were saying at the beginning there that you were taking off your, your listing video, listing one as well. So your listing is uh, presentation is very much the same as your buyer, buyer presentation. I haven't done it yet, but it oh. would be, it's probably gonna be more detailed. Because um, I'm, my appointments are very long if I have to go over marketing and I want to be thorough. Mm -hmm. um, so by the time you go in and you look at someone's house, you review a marketing plan and you do a CMA, maybe not in those three in that order, mm -hmm. you're at someone's house for a couple hours. And, well, I, and, and I, sorry, and I am there. Like I, I do, I am a two hour guy on um, my, and I think it's worth the time to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and we have quite a substantial uh, listing presentation, but I love this buyer presentation so much. I thought if you have a, a listing one that's very similar, it'd be great to see. Well, and I'm going to redo it. So I'd be happy to share it when I redo it, but I want to be able to set it, send it ahead of time. So if I spend two hours with somebody, I don't really want to be talking at them or doing a presentation. If we have to talk more about what to do with their house or talk more about numbers and the comps, that's cool. Um, I mean, I just find that people glaze over and they're bored because they don't understand the value of this. You know, it's the same, they, they go with that person who gives them the highest price usually, mm -hmm. at least in my market right now. Cause we only, I mean, normally we carry about at least five or 6,000 homes. We only mm -hmm. have 2,500 on the market right now. Okay. Same, that's the yeah. same as here. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I remember when there was 11,000 in 2008. <laughs> Back in the good old days. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I did this and it just, and when I do the presentation, I don't go through it verbatim with people. I'm going to add some stuff, take some things out, but I just tell them, listen, I just want to talk and I'm not going to talk at you. I'm not going to read the slides. This is just to keep me in line so i cover the things that i need to cover so if something's not relevant i'll skip over it you have questions you want to ask ask me but we just use it for conversation but it, it starts everybody out on the right foot because there's really no time to like i said i we used to talk about these things when we would look at houses i would talk to them about the contract this is what what the inspection's about I don't get a chance to do any of that. So I'm going to have buyer presentation number two that goes a little bit deeper. And I already have a contract one. So I have a video where I review the contract with someone. Um, and we also need to share that with sellers too, because sometimes that's, that's a hurdle that I struggle with with sellers is they don't understand the contract. And then I, I give them 20 offers and we review them, but they don't understand the contract. They don't even know what they're looking at with those 20 people. Right. So mm -hmm. I need to do a better job at that too, but there's only one Suzanne to go around. So if I can leverage myself by recording some of these things, it gives me, it's, I'm much more effective with people. So we, it was a question, I guess. So this can be recorded and sent off. Yeah. Like if you were doing a voiceover or a, yeah. and, and I believe you touched on, you could do a video down in the corner, like that little picture had, have you played with that yet? Um, no, but I think you could probably review it and not have this little person down here. <laughs> Cause you can do that in loom in loom. You can be on the screen or not be on the screen. So I would imagine it would be work very similar to how loom works. If you've used that. Right, um, right. What one of the things with size is with these videos, sometimes you might not need the whole thing. So you can actually crop the video. That was one thing I wanted to mention. So it shows like the whole run. So if I wanted to shorten this, I could do that. Mm -hmm. um, there's one section like with the little girl. I just picked the part of that video that I wanted here. Yeah, I cropped, I cropped that quite a bit because um, it was really, really long. So I cropped all this part out. Okay, so when you're talking about Loom, mm -hmm. Loom is what? Oh, Explain Loom that. is a different program. Mm -hmm. um, do I have it? Hold on. 
So is Loom like a Zoom sort of thing, or what? What would you? How do you use that? Kind of. Um, so I use Loom for training. So I have a virtual assistant. So if I need to train something with him, um, like, like for here was like a video that I made because for some reason our sales were not being added to our Zillow profile automatically. So I had to show Leo how to do it. So I created this video to train him. Um, if I'm doing, let me find one. Cause I found, I hated trying to schedule with a bot, with a seller, some sort of update on why their house wasn't selling. And then if I did spend time and talk to like the husband, he would always want to talk to his wife. Well, he yeah. can't convey what I conveyed. Yeah, you're expecting him to present your presentation to his Exactly. Spouse. So yeah. I would just I would just like record this. And it's like me. I wanted to take a few minutes and do it. So I go through kind of like what happens, what was going on. I show them the MLS. Um, what and then you happen? send a link and then they're looking at it as an MP4 or, or it's just yep. they're, yep. they're looking. Okay. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'll send that off. So I'll tell them, so you can see I'm not on the screen. So uh -huh. I'm sure that you can record this in a similar fashion or here I can, uh -huh. I can mute it. So it's not loud, but you can see, um, like I go over the MLS. Um, I show them that their rapport, we use flex. So I'm able to show like what other people have looked at. So that way I can show them, hey, they're just not looking at houses in your neighborhood. We got to think about other neighborhoods. Um, but yeah, I send all this out. And so I share it and then I show them the showing, how many showings people have gotten in their price range. So is this something that you could, um, you sort of use in loom of something like bomb bomb or something like that for sending video to people? Um, I loom, you actually just put it in your own email. So, I mean, you could put it in a bomb bomb. You could upload it. If you wanted to do a market update in through your MLS, you could record mm -hmm. it and then put it into bomb bomb. So it sounds like it's more seamless than doing a screen share on zoom, hitting the record. Don't go back at the recording, link it into something. It's a pretty, pretty seamless thing. Yeah, you don't have to use Zoom for that. But then, but like I said, I use this for training. Um, but I would imagine, like, if I'm going to record something, I can either be in it, my picture can be in it, or nothing can be there, and I can just be narrating. So I would imagine that this would work the same way when you go back, present and record. See, it says, record yourself while talking over a presentation. Share a video link with students, friends, or colleagues. Okay. So that would be amazing doing okay. your listing presentation. So you can do it the way I would do that is I would record like a generic one. Yep. And then I would share it with my sellers before I went and met with them. And then I would maybe touch on if they ask about what are you gonna do when you list my house? Let's go through the list. You remember seeing this in my presentation let me go over it with you here. And then you can kind of personalize it. And you could also, you've got your your presentation like this here, which can be plain and you can, you can voice over it specific to a person speaking to them on the recording and send it off to them separately. Right? You could, Maybe that would make my brain hurt if you wanted, I mean, if you're <laughs> 20 appointments to do that 20 times. I think yeah. that's kind of where I was like, I feel I I just I feel like a broken record. I'd rather spend time with somebody with trying to fix up their house, looking at the comps rather than just mm -hmm. going saying the same thing over and over and over again. So if I can record that and then I'll pull out a slide and be like, hey, do you remember we talked about this? And did you look at your video and make sure you look at it? Otherwise I'll be at your house for a long time and you don't want me at, the, at your house. So yeah, to be able to do that, to prepare them, but that way they have it. Um, but there is, so you can present and record. So you'll get a link that you can share. And one of the things I just saw, there's always new things 
Um, and I have been dug into this yet video presentation. I don't even know what this is. This just appeared here today. Hmm. So that's even more exciting. Yeah, cool. So is there anything, so this is the bar presentation, you're working on your listing presentation. Mm -hmm. You know, is, is there anything that you, as you've gone through this, you see that maybe I should be adding to there? Any things that you've, you've sort of determined that you need to add to your buyer presentation? Are you asking me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like now you've done it, you're gonna change anything. Uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna add, um, and, and I'm on the fence on whether I'm gonna add stuff to that about what to expect for showings. I might just do a separate one that's really short. Say, listen, mm -hmm. when we look at house, this is what you're supposed to look at. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's really funny. I'm finding that there's a lot of buyers out there. There's a lot of information on the internet. I was with people last week. They were like, so what are we supposed to do when we're here? <laughs> Tell me if you could live here or not. <laughs> interesting. Eh? <laughs> so, so they don't know. So it's really kind of interesting. So I was going to go through something like, you know, look around the house, see if there's any deferred maintenance. Um, does it have the updates you want? Uh, and I'll, po I'll point out the stuff that inspectors will find and maybe you don't think about, but you need to decide if you can live there. And that's mm -hmm. what I always tell my buyers. You have to decide if you can live here. I have to decide and give you advice as if I was selling this five years from now. And if I don't think I can sell this five years from now, I won't let you buy it today. So with, with buyers, where do you, or how do you get them introduced to your reviews? How do, how do you get them? I, I don't well, know that that's maybe something that I would ask. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, um, that's sort of the only thing that I saw might've been missing. So that'd be good. And I, is it possible with the, with the video that's playing in the background, is it possible to have a video that you've recorded playing your own video playing in the yes. background of one of those slides? So you have your own uploads. So like when I create stuff, there's things here that I've uploaded. See, here's like all of our sales. I'm probably going to do something with that. Um, but you mm -hmm. could upload a video here and add it instead of the stock video. Okay. So it, I, what I was just thinking is that if you got to the point where you want to do your reviews, you could have a couple of reviews and then maybe up pops a quick little cool video review from one of your clients in there as well. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that'd really be do. sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think if you go back to um, here, like if you do like something like this, like this is the video here. You could have somebody's review here and you could have the client. Ah, yeah, yeah. If I, if, I don't know if everybody can see that. What, it's sort you of a split screen. Video. Here, I'll do that. Let's see, where is that? You have to look for something that has the video in it. I don't know, what does this do? I think, I, I, th I think, I, yeah, there, there's something in there was a split screen. I get to it, I get what you mean. Yep, so you could put a video in here. Right. Oh wait, here's a video. Okay, so you could like do this. So you just drag a video into there, pops it into that square yep. and put your stuff off to the right. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. You don't have to have a lot of those, but I think that'd be really effective for a listing presentation or a buyer presentation. Or it could be on a listing presentation, it could you could have a, a screen talking about your um, your 3D virtual tours and then a quick little video of a 3D virtual tour playing off inside the screen. Yep. Pretty sweet. Pretty yeah, sweet. Yeah, I mean, it I makes, makes me crazy thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the... the Going back to you know, what, what you said earlier and the struggle that, that many of our coaching clients have is, is you know, especially in a fast paced market, more, I'm thinking more now on the listing side of things. You know, we're, 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 we need to show the buyers, obviously, what we're gonna be doing, which they don't have to pay a dime for. So it's ridiculous why they wouldn't wanna work with you based on what you're presenting here. But on the listing side of things too, is that 
in such a fast-paced environment, they really don't think that we're worthy of the fees that we charge, mm-hmm. and that uh, and that you get paid in direct proportion to the service that you provide, the quality service that you provide. Oftentimes, they just can't see it. But the other thing too is that I I, I truly believe that you could be the best realtor known to mankind, the, the best service, the best listing agent known to mankind. But if you don't have the ability to present that value to the seller, then you're gonna lose opportunities. Right. Even if you are the best, they're, they're, they're skipping over the best to go to something you know, sometimes really, really bad. Not because you're not good, they just can't recognize that based on the they, they don't know, I mean, there's a reason, and I, I try to think about this and, and um, try to put it uh, related to something else. It's like cars, right? Um, mm-hmm. People don't know about cars. I just got to pull the screen share off for a second. So yeah. just in case people, anybody wants people to. Uh... Don't, people don't know about cars, right? So right. if people chose the best engine, you wouldn't mm-hmm. have to have a bunch of different body types and colors, right? Mm-hmm. But they don't, they don't, they don't want the best engine necessarily. So mm-hmm. that's why there's all those different things for them to choose from. You know, so it's kind of like every one of us comes in a different package and yeah. whoever has the sexiest package for that buyer wins or for that seller. They don't yeah. care about what the guts have. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. And yeah, this is just a, and it's a, it could be a complete, you know, I'm looking at this too. It could be a complete smoke and mirrors presentation that has no value at all. But if it's presented in a sexy enough way, then you can get people to buy into it. Even if there's not much substance, you know, having substance with a great presentation is killer, mm-hmm. in, in my opinion. Well, right, and I've so found we got... a lot of appointments now where, you know, people, they, they either don't want to meet because of COVID or they're a couple and they, you know, they don't, they don't they're not together because their schedule doesn't allow. So I don't want somebody else to have to do my job for me. Exactly. So be able to send them this stuff ahead of time yep. and then they have it. Um, and also, especially like marketing, like they don't understand the value of social. They don't understand, you know, I was telling you about that house that we had a buyer go into contract on and it was like listed on some obscure website. No one even knew where that was. And those sellers probably cost themselves a lot of money because they didn't expose their property to a lot of people. We won because we had the buyer. So that was a benefit to us. But, you know, they don't understand what exposure means. So it gives you more of an opportunity to explain that stuff if it's recorded in a presentation rather than trying to make someone understand it when you're at their house. Because when you're at their house, they just want to know how much you think their house is worth. They want to know how much they can get for it. And that's it. They don't want, they don't want to talk to you. They don't want a relationship. They don't want to hear what your marketing is. What can you sell my house for today? Right. Okay, anybody, please unmute yourself if you have a question or I'll just keep asking questions. I don't care. Go well, I have Suzanne. a question. Go ahead, I have Candace. a question because she talks about um, a lot, several times about it not costing them anything, but there's a new law, NAR lawsuit out there about how we're charging and doing all that. So, you know, that's going to become an issue. And the second thing is, the difference between a pre-qual and a pre-approval letter and pre-approval being that they've been through automated underwriting. Do you explain those two differences to your clients? No, that's too much on a first meeting. I Got mean, it. that's, I just want them to get to a lender and gotcha. to get, to, get to a good lender and open the conversation um, about, you know, have you been to somebody? And a lot of times I'll get, oh, I've been to my bank. Okay. I right. love banks for your checking and savings account, but <laughs> they're not going to be around on Saturday afternoon when we need a, an address specific pre-approval. Right. So, you know, let's right. figure out how right. we're going to do that. Are we going to go to someone else? And then as far as the commission, I mean, I, I know that that's out there. We'll deal with it when it's a problem, but right now they don't have to pay in my market. Now we do talk about co-op fees and how we're paid. And I expect to get 3%. And there's times when some sellers don't want to pay that. So we go over that when we do the buyer agreement as well. And no, I expect to be paid that. So, and, you know, and quite frankly, if, you know, I'm looking for off-market inventory for you, 
I'm doing all this extra leg work. If somebody's only paying two and three quarters, you know, would you pony up the extra quarter of a percent? They usually, they have no problem with that. And we'll make it part of your closing costs. If they see the value in working with you, and that's, that's the key, right? Exactly. I've never really had anybody say no. Yeah, yeah. Um, questions, anybody? Keep asking questions. I'll, I'll um, Barbara did ask me a question. So you did this your, yourself. You did it all that from, from soup to nuts, you did the whole thing yourself. Uh, how long did it take you, ballpark? Well, on, I mean, it, it's, it's like every year this time, I look at what I've been using, what's worked and what hasn't worked. So this is a culmination of like every buyer presentation I've had for 15 years. So, uh -huh. I mean, it didn't take me that long to put it in Canva and do like the fun videos and stuff because it's really kind of an outline of what I had. Um, mm -hmm. But it, I mean, it starting fresh, it probably wouldn't take more than a couple hours. I mean, if you really had to sit down and create content, if you already had content, it only took me about an hour or so. All right. So if you... You're obviously adept at working through Canva. <clears throat> if you were challenged somewhat with that, is that something you feel you could have walked through with um, with Leo together in a screen share and working on it together? That's something you think a virtual assistant could do for you? So that oh, was another yeah. one of Burp. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, and even um, you know, YouTube has tons of videos on how to do things in Canva. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna look and see that's how I learn stuff. I don't figure mm -hmm. that out on my own. So like the new feature with the video presentation, I might look on YouTube and see who's doing it. And I always like to look outside of real estate. I, you know, we all share stuff gets recycled. Um, and I feel that we need to look at things that are outside of our industry to get some cool ideas on how other products are being presented. And mm -hmm. there, I think that's where you get the best ideas. All right. Back again, uh, I think you answered this. So you've got Loom that you can record this on. And then could, let's say for instance, you, you're going to be in a situation where you may have um, internet challenges. Is this, is this an M, can you, can you turn it into an MP4 that can just be available offline onto your computer or iPad or something like that? Yeah, I think you could. I mean, I wouldn't use Loom for my presentation. I use Loom if, um, so Loom is just a screen share. So I'll right. go in and review my MLS. I'll review a showing report. I'll review showing feedback, all these different things. And I just record my screen with the information I want a seller to get. It's right. not really, and then I share that with them be like, hey, here's, here's what's going on. Let's talk about it when you got 20 minutes. All right. So, so I'll just do that quick and dirty. It's not really like a presentation, but I think like through Canva, you can record through Canva and download an MP4. Okay, cool. Yeah. Perfect. Good stuff. Yeah. Cause you can download when you're in Canva, you can download. I mean, if I wanted to download that as a PDF, I could do that and it just wouldn't play the video. You right. Right. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. All right. Any other questions? Okay, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, any uh, any Americans, if uh, if your your call this week is going to be hampered by any travel or anything like that, please give me a big old heads up. So we'll do what we can to reschedule you. Um, I had a, I just I did a um, little Zoom call with uh, Isabella this morning. She's so nice. She goes, I don't want to keep bothering them for all their, their notes. Just keep bothering them. Okay. So if you get multiple emails from Isabella looking for your notes and your production report, please you know, get them to, to us. And that um, there's, there's this whole reporting thing that I need to do with the company that I've, that's sort of been, the notch has been turned up here a little bit. So it's really important that the production report is, is kept up to date. Um, we're actually going back, I'm having her go back through everybody's production report right to the beginning of the year, putting in monthly totals that, that have to go into the, it's this whole system you don't see in the background, that there was a bit of a mess. So um, especially need uh, the November's up to date as soon as, as soon as you can. And 
December typically would be a month where it might only be coaching for two weeks in December. I'd be taking a little bit of time up, but I'm not going anywhere. So we'll be coaching right probably straight through to, I don't know, pretty close to Christmas anyways. We'll, we'll still continue. Probably not likely any calls will be between Christmas and New Year's. And then we'll, we'll jump right back in uh, right after New Year's is over. So I uh, hope anybody, maybe some thumbs up here. Was this a, a good topic to be going over? Great. It was I awesome. It. Thank you so much, Suzanne. It was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Suzanne, if you can put a link to what you just did, maybe a couple of notes in uh, in our Facebook group, that would be awesome. You know, I, I like this idea of just trying to have, you know, one week we'll do the old hour of power thing. The week in between, we'll do a little topic like this, which is really cool. So, um, you know, if anybody has, um, if, if anybody has a, a like a topic they feel that they could present to the group. We'd love that. And, or even if there's someone outside of our little group within our ecosystem that, that uh, might be a good presenter that I could approach or you could approach on my, our behalf, that'd be great. We'll sort of line up some, uh, some topics in through the, the new year. So we'll probably do, um, we'll do one more like this in two weeks from now, and then we'll pick up again after, after new year's. The hour of power will probably go into the 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 beginning of or the middle of December. So I want to I wanted to ask uh, her. She had a little um, presentation about um, uh, what she does for a listing that doesn't sell, where she had the map and she had that was very useful for me. Let's say if you don't have a property, if you have a property that's not selling, and then that presentation that you had that she had with the seller. Do you remember oh, that? My, my update? Yeah, yeah. You had a little map and why things were not selling in this particular neighborhood and where they were selling. Mm -hmm. I think that's really useful if you have, well, I have one. I sell everything else, but this one particular one. So that was very useful for me. And I was wondering if you have that that you could share as well. Yeah, I mean, those, I don't really, they're they're just kind of informal conversations that I record okay. and I go through the- But, but what are I your prepare. talking points? Your talking I, I mean, I, I show them, um, I'm able, we use Flex MLS. So I'm able to pull up, if anybody else has accessed the property through MLS, yeah. I can see what else they looked at and what else they saved. Okay. Um, and then I always, I do that. And then I go to Zillow so we can see how many views I see. If I've run any social ads. I show them that like 90,000 people looked at their house. So mm -hmm. they stop yelling at me. Like I'm not doing enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's clearly good. not my, my fault. Yeah. And we review the showing information. I so see. I'm able to pull up, um, showing time and see how many, like they had two showings. They think that's terrible. Well, their competition only had one. Yeah. So they're getting okay. as many. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So I can, I'll put that up there too. Thank you. All right, guys. It was so this, this had, is awesome. Oh, Doug, I want right. to pop in. Um, I like the idea of using this also for little videos on how to prep your house for photos, how to prep your house for an open house, just like little, you know, instead of doing a video on it, you can mix up lists and photos and video. I, I think this is a cool way to do so many things. Yeah, it makes me insane because I start <laughs> thinking I have like this list and then especially I have like some great before and after success stories. So to be able to show the pictures, like, like in a video, I guess you can do that, but I don't know. I think I would rather show like a recording, some text, be able to talk over it and show before and after. I mean, you could do it and then you could record it. So it looks like a video. Yeah. And I think at home is before it became empty nesters could be how to actually put dishes in the dishwasher versus leaving the sink and, <laughs> and the ABCs of, of installing a roll of toilet paper. It was very, it would be very good too. Anyways, I okay, guys, I got I got to bounce to call. Um, connect with Suzanne if you have any questions. Uh, hopefully, your Facebook friends with each other. If not, uh, if you don't have Suzanne's information, text me and I'll text it to you. And Suzanne, uh, again, appreciate it. Thank you very much. That was really really awesome. It was good. And I look forward to seeing your listing presentation someday soon.
can give you lots of time over Christmas to work on it. Talk to you soon, hey, guys. Give me a deadline. That's better. <laughs> okay, December 15th. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. I'm leaving. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thank you.